What up, everybody? This is your boy, Shiver Speaks, man. And if you guys are new to this channel, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also subscribe to my boys, hit Middle Boy Gaming and He's Gaming for Gaming and Live Streaming. They do some pretty dope stuff. You may even catch a boy up on there taking some ass with them someday. Okay, in this episode of Into the Badlands, season three, episode 13, Black Lotus, White Rose, we get the history of my boy, Sonny, and the history of the Black Lotus somewhat, and its leader, Magnus, and his true intentions. Um, we learned pretty much that Kanan, uh, which is Sonny's sister, was actually kept alive. And in fact, she even said that Magnus actually saved her life, you know, and he and he actually brought her salvation. Meanwhile, you know, Sonny's like, well, well, BS. This man is only here to control you. Even we actually heard him say it out his damn mouth. He literally said as Sonny was being swept away to go get fed by the Black Lotus members, he literally flipped the clock over and says, you have... Until this sand runs out to get to unlock his gift. And just remember, after giving her a kiss, you're nothing but a dog to me. Or something of like that variation. And so, for Sonny, he already, he, his eyes are wide open. He already knows the truth. Like, look, this guy doesn't fucking love you. He's just here to control you. You're just his damn dog and puppet. Now, mind you, Baji is re resurrected by Ankara. They're, they're using the very last ounce of her power to save Baji's life. In fact, when Baji actually risen from the dead, he said, what the hell did you do that for? Like, you know, Baji was on the critical, 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 critical list of dying. You saw it in his eyes. His soul was getting ready to depart from his body and go on to the next phase. But Ankara ended up saving his life because she knew that Baji, you know, was a necessity to help get rid of Pilgrim. And when she said, look, you're all, you, were always, you were always my favorite. Don't tell anybody. You know, with, you know laughing. And we saw Baji mourn a uh, person that, that he really cared deeply for. And so... As the scene, as this episode carried on, you know, Kanan actually showed, uh, unlocked Sonny's memories and showed him, okay, this is where you grew up. This is how you lived. You know, we saw a young Sonny and a young Pilgrim that we all know now is touring, training, and Sonny actually beat Pilgrim. And, you know, and Kanan, even Kanan was like, wait, why are you so hard on it? You know, and then she got him ready for, you know, the, the ceremony, which is where Sonny was uh, gifted and Pilgrim were both gifted to the talisman of Azra. Because Azra was actually a real place. In fact, that Sonny was actually taken and Sonny was taken, I'm sorry, excuse me. Sonny was actually taken and living on Azra. His father actually was a great warrior as well. We saw his father for the first time ever as well. And they were there was a small civilization of all these people, this community, living on in, in Azra. That is until, you know, Sonny's father catches Magnus and his group, the very first Black Lotus. Now, Sonny's father didn't know who the hell they were. He said, well, how the hell did you guys get past our defenses? And so, you know, he kills two of Magnus's people right in front of him. He doesn't face Magnus. But for young Sonny, as Kanan put it, this was the day that your, your innocence was taken away. You know, Sonny saw two men get killed right in front of him. Very, 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 very bad stuff. And even his father, you know, justified and said, listen, son, killing is a part of life. You know, you're destined to be a killer. So that lets me know, Sonny actually had a, has a huge heart. He really was not, you know, bred for killing. He really didn't want to kill. We even saw that when Magnus was actually his prisoner. His father even told him, look, you know, you have until, you know, this, this, this clock of sand runs out to confess. Or you will die on my hands by my son's hand. And Sonny whipped out his damn sword. He was getting ready to kill Magnus, but he actually freed Magnus. And then I guess Magnus ended up actually killing his father because, you know, Sonny was actually knocked out. You know, Magnus pushed, you know, Sonny into like this brick wall that was half broken and he hit his head. And I guess Sonny never re regained the, like that, those memories after that. And um, we even see throughout the episode, you know, like as, as I'm going to say next, uh, we actually found out that the master is a true name. Her name is Ada, you know, and, and, and in her passing, you know, she showed Minerva where she grew up and what, how, how she unlocked her gift. And she realized and acknowledged, you know, the hypocrisy that she was showing her own students. You know, here she was thinking that pe keeping these students, these kids up on a mountain in a temple was actually safe for them, but only keeping them a prisoner. You know, she acknowledged her, uh, her hypocrisy of doing so. And then even showed us a little bit more of how she actually came to her gift. 
you know, she was with her brothers, you know, picking fruit or whatnot. All of a sudden, she gets cut, and then she, her gift turns on, and she ends up killing her brother. And her parents looked at her horrifyingly, and that's how she knew. And not even just that, but then Baji actually saves Sunny, but in doing so, Sunny tries to get his son, his sister Kanan to come with him. You know, at first, at the first shot, he says, "Look, look, look, look! You can come. You don't have to live like this anymore. I need you, my Henry needs you. This world needs you. You don't have to be under Magnus's control anymore." And Magnus, being all high and mighty, says, "Really? Now, that's not going to work." Your sister's under my damn control. I own her, pretty much. And so we see pretty much in Sonny just chained up in the very chains that Kanan was chained up in, where he actually, you know, where I think I believe Magnus actually bragged about forcing himself in Kanan into his bed. So basically, if you, know, you guys don't know what that means, he sexually exalted her. And actually, it was when... Kanan actually unlocked her gift that she actually put her finger to um, to Sonny's temple again and actually showed him the memory that, that you know, of what she'd gone through with Mag, being with Magnus. And that was when she freed Sonny. And not to mention, you know, Baji was, was bounded up too. In fact, he had a bit of a wise crack to say about that. He said, yeah, you know, I'm back from the dead. Oh, yeah, by the way, you know, I appreciate you for giving me heartburn. Because you, Baji was getting ready to actually mutilate, not, not mutilate, but actually decapitate Magnus right there, and I was I was waiting for him to do that, but I know they're gonna save him for like a final finale, and I really look forward to it. But we also see, you know, Ada, you know, aka the Master, she was Minerva as her successor, and so the Master tells Ada, I mean Minerva, to just burn the damn temple down to the ground, and along with you know the teachings of the, the the scrolls that were written down and things of that nature. Not to mention Gaia as and Tilda went to you know Baron Child's former fortress, showed her 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 cogs that she is now dead, you know, and pretty much just made a peace treaty with him. But they now see Gaius as they are buried, I guess. And then also Gaius has a bit of an open dialogue with Minerva before he goes off to Baron Child's fortress and says, "Looks like Tilda could, could, could use a daughter." And even Tilda actually affirmed, you know, the widows and Gaius's relationship. He said, "Look, she's like, I just want to, know, I just need to know that you're serious because if you break her heart." I'll rip yours out. I'll cut yours out. And that and guys kind of smiled and chuckled. You know, which is the, I mean, let's let you know that, you know, it, it's real. So I look forward to next week's episode, man, to see what happens, man. And again, I'm sorry. To, I'm sad to see this series go because I really enjoyed it. But I look forward to seeing how this all goes down. Um, not to mention uh, Pilgrim, he finally restored his strength, I guess, by giving the gift to all the other wicked ones. But wicked ones, the ones that, you know, were risen out of that nightmare, as Pilgrim put it. You know, and even, you know, before the master was killed, she said, you're literally, you know, killing yourself for this damn power. And you're only misguiding some these some lost children. And, and she's right, because that's all Pilgrim actually is. He became, again, he's, Pilgrim has become so consumed by power, by this gift that, you know, he just... You know, these kids don't even realize it. And, you know, I'm and I hope MK wakes the fuck up and realizes that, oh shit, um, she was right. And I think something tells me that MK is gonna kind of regret his actions by standing by Pilgrim because before, you know, as you know, the master was dying, uh, Pilgrim told MK very weakly, You are now my one and only true son. You will for now you will forever stand by me. Which now makes MK obligated <laughs> to stay stand by Pilgrim. But then again, MK made his bed and now he's laying in it. But I'm, something tells me MK is not going to go down with Pilgrim. And I at least I hope not. I really don't. I really enjoyed his character being the good guy so far. And he plays a pretty good bad guy too. Or I should just say neutral anti-hero guy too. So I look forward to seeing what happens, man. This has been your boy, Sherry Speaks. Peace and love.